Hello and welcome to the program. I am DG Badimasi. Now, Nigeria was treated to a very high wire political drama last week in the northeastern state of Adamawa, where, unpre where the unprecedented, if you like, happened. The resident electoral commissioner of the state staged what you could describe as an election coup when he usurped the functions of the returning officer in a governorship election and made a return. He declared the candidate of the All Progressives Congress in the election winner even when votes in the supplementary election had not been fully collated. Well, Amadou Fintori, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, has since been declared winner of the gubernatorial election. But the bizarre drama that played out in the state is still a major topic of discussion. Fintori's victory comes one month after the March 18th governorship elections. Now, the conduct of the resident electoral commissioner, Hudu Yunusari, when he declared Senator Aisha Dahiru Ahmed as, uh, the, as the candidate now of the All Progressives Congress as governor-elect against the rules, actually put, uh, puts INEC now in a very bad light. But the good thing is that uh, INEC uh, quickly intervened, arrested the process, and ensured the rules were eventually complied with, leading, of course, to the declaration of Fintory as the winner of the election. Now, Section 25 of the Electoral Act, which is very crucial in this case, empowers only the returning officer to announce the result and declare the winner of an election at the state coalition center in the case of a governorship election of a state. So what the resident electoral commissioner did, that's a controversial electoral, a resident electoral commissioner now did, was completely out of order. President Muhammadu Buhari has now suspended uh, the wreck and they ordered that uh, the police should investigate and prosecute him if found culpable. The Inspector General of Police has also replaced the Adama State uh, Commissioner of Police who escorted the suspended wreck to the collision center where he announced or made that controversial declaration. To delve more into this, I'm now being joined on the program by Dr. John Ngamsa, who is a former commissioner of information and also a commissioner for youth and sports in Adamawa State. Also joining us, uh, he joins us, by the way, from Adamawa. And joining us from Abuja is a public affairs analyst, uh, Shehu Wata, who is also a member and stakeholder, uh, stakeholder relations directorate of the Tinubu Shetima Presidential Campaign Council. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on the program. Dr. Ngamsa, let me start with you. G give us uh, an idea. W what exactly is the state of things in Adama State at the moment? I, I hope everywhere is calm now. Yeah, I think with all things being Nicole, um, the town is calm. And uh, following exactly what happened some time ago, uh, the mix-up, you, you, you comfortably call that political drama, uh, we can say that the governor and the state here did his best in not allowing supporters to provoke others into any kind of uh, uncalled action. Mm. So it's been fine enough. While jubilation still go on, uh, people are enjoying themselves and the state capital is calm. Even the outskirts, where you can see that he's well supported, you know, the people also conducted themselves in a very good manner. So um, it's just a question of seeing how virtually everything went on right and the happiness that was there. Um, if you are just a comma into Yola and you are able to stumble over how the people are jubilating, you'll definitely know that it's a question, you know, it's an answer, you know, to what the people are expecting and the rightful declaration of uh, Amadou Fintry as the governor of the state. Now, now let, let, let me ask you, uh when this election, when the governorship election was declared inconclusive, did you, as an individual now, did you have any inkling that we were going to be treated to this kind of high-wire political drama uh, in the supplementary election? Well, you know, going by what Nigerian politics is, is, is over a period of time and how people have been desperate and uh, taking the history you are likely to understand that uh, some people will be there to circumvent the process, you know, doing it not the right way. And uh, when that happened, we thought it was going to be a clear cut thing and straightforward like in other places. But then the events unfolding, particularly, you know, where the Rick, you know, uh, did his own uh, devil advocacy of whatever manner, we knew that we're in for something that except God intervenes, you know, it's going to boomerang and uh, result into certain things that are not supposed to be. 
But from all expectation, uh, there's the rule of law. And from all expectation, too, we got to understand that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is somebody who would like to have a very clean transition from where it is you know, to something much more justifiable. And we've seen also the steps taken by the federal government to put it right and to make people to be accountable. Mm. That in itself, to me, gave the confidence uh, in, in our process, particularly what the INEC was able to do in uh, justifying, you know, and calling back the actual uh, officer that is supposed to make the announcements to come back and to continue his work. You know, that in itself brought about confidence. To me, I looked at that as a very credible, optimistic process that have uh, worked to sanitize our own democracy to some extent. And uh, the restoration of the integrity of the INEC itself, you know, following the process and mm. understanding that something evil was done, you know, is something actually worth commending. And because it is worth commending, I can see that people are restoring their confidence, you know, in the government as expected. And everybody knew, you know, when Ahmad Fintry came up there, he scored good enough a lead, at least to be declared. But for certain things that happened at the background, where Hudu himself has succeeded in one term, you know, to circumvent whatever it is, there was an audio release from Fofore where he was calling on the officer there to ensure that uh, Binani got uh, the, the right votes or additional votes at least to make her come to win. You know, where he was saying that help this woman, help this woman in Hausa. All those things were tried and passed across. And uh, it was good enough that, uh, you know, the agencies responded and uh, people also opened up on the media, which stood up at least for the volume of truth. You can see that there's commendation coming all over, you know, particularly mm. what the media was able to do, irrespective of political uh, uh, inclinations and whatnot. They were able to stand out there and to make the truth. Mm. So um, it was okay. quite good. And okay. I'm sure I, 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 it was an interesting okay. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm going to come back to you. Let, let me just go to uh, Shehu in Abuja. Shehu, uh, you are, of course, of uh, the All Progressives uh, Congress, and um, at some point your party was fingered as responsible for, for the drama we saw in, in Adamawa, uh, even though nothing has been proven yet. Uh, but, you know, th th there have been insinuations that uh, the wreck was basically working for uh, your party and uh, its candidate in that governorship election. W what do you make of that drama that played out? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Baraka Desala, to all Nigerians. Uh, um, what happened last week, uh, over the weekend, last weekend, uh, during the, uh, the runoff election at uh, in Adamawa State, was uh, to say very unfortunate. Hmm. Is uh, a clear indication. Hello, are you hearing me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. So it's a clear indication that uh, you know. Uh, our our statutory organs like the INEC, for instance, the regulatory organ, the INEC, the responsible for conducting our election, uh, to some extent has uh, has been uh, influenced by uh, by the politicians. Unfortunately, that happened. Uh, the wreck did what he did, but you know it's uh it's, it gives me a lot of joy that. The INEC was allowed by the government in power to perform its function without any form of interference. You could see that INEC immediately ran in on the incident that happened. It's an unfortunate incident. It's not because of uh, any party affiliation. I'm mm. a member of the APC. But that does not mean that when you see something that is wrong, you will not, uh, you will not, you have to support the, a wrong, uh, a wrong action because if so, it, uh, it, it favors your, your party. We're talking about democracy. We're talking about sustainability of our, of our institutions. So what happened was unfortunate. And uh, we thank God all the actions that have followed so far. INEC has been able to, uh, to, to reverse the, the unfortunate incidents. The result has been announced. Uh, the governor elect has collected his, uh, his uh, letter. And uh, you can see clearly that even the federal government, uh, led by Mr. President, have issued out a query letter to the REC. And, uh, you know, the, the people involved have been uh, held to question. So it's an unfortunate incident that happened, and uh, we're not quite happy about that that happened. Now, now let me ask you, 
this is a wreck who is a lawyer who who clearly understands the rules i mean there's, there's no no doubt about that so what what do you think could have pushed him to to act the way he did you know um what happened clearly shows that uh INEC has been penetrated by some interests i won't say this time around i, will, I won't say who's uh bidding the wreck was uh was playing i will not I will not point any finger at anybody, but definitely the action, what he did was very wrong. So it's a clear indication that uh, INEC as a body uh, still have some one or two bad eggs. Uh, they have mm. made tremendous uh, progress from where INEC was. Uh, you, we could see clearly that the INEC was allowed by the state to function as, as an independent body. We cannot say that in an organization like an INEC, everybody there will be will be will be hundred uh, percent clean. So uh, the case of uh, Hudu Ari, the resident uh, electoral commissioner of uh, Adama State, was a very unfortunate incident, and uh, we give INEC the kudos for doing what they have done so far. Mm. I also applaud uh, the federal government led by. Uh, His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari for approving the suspension of the resident electoral commissioner. It is an unfortunate incident. Our party is not in support of this. We cannot say that it favors us today or uh, whatever um, shabby uh, announcement he made on that day favors our party and we will now decide to support the action that which, which was clearly wrong. We now decide to support that. We as well uh, appreciate the action of INEX so far, and we appreciate the leadership of the country by the president for approving the suspension and ordering a probe into the incident that happened during the runoff election of Adamawa State. Dr. Ngamsa, let me come to you. Um, when, when the resident, the, the controversial, uh, controversial resident electoral commissioner, and I'm talking about Hudu Yunusari, when he went to make that declaration, you could clearly see uh, the Commissioner of Police of the state, of course, who has now been replaced, and some other senior uh, security uh, uh, officials now of security agencies sitting beside him. So seemingly giving the impression that uh, he, he probably did not act alone. So going forward, you know, the, the president, of course, has, has uh, suspended this uh, individual, ordered a probe and all of that. What are the questions that you would want answered? Well, with all sense of seriousness and responsibility, um, the security services that gave him the backup, to some extent, you know, did the wrong thing. And if the police themselves have withdrawn the CP and is back to Abuja, one anticipates that uh, whoever is there on the table, either director DSS or the army, whatever it is, whoever is there, should also be done. I mean, the same action should go on so that we can have very clear answers, you know, to the doubts on our minds. But in the first place, let me agree with Shehu in completely, you know, that uh, what the president did is foremostly, you know, coming out of a sense of responsibility and a true, you know, attempt to save our own democracy from collapse. Hmm. This is a democracy we've been living without self-evidence. So in essence, if security agents are part of this particular whatever it is, to my mind, they also should be questioned and be put to a situation where they will answer for what they've done. So essentially, um, in Adamawa State, I can uh, give you the sense of direction to the fact that next time something is going to happen like this, mm. people will definitely have confidence in the INEC itself, what they've succeeded in doing, in declaring and doing the right process. So to me, there are other things we need to actually take serious. And those things are, what do we really do in the process of trying to declare elections? You know, when security services are there and they're not there giving the right answers or to the people that are trying to find out things. One anticipates that a rec resident at that moment who has the opportunity to sit with security services would have asked for their own advice on good mood and mm. they too should be in position, you know, to give him the kind of clarified kind of advice that will justify the process and make it at least well uh, defined in such a way that it would be of, of, of moral uh, assessment. So to us, 
uh, in the state, we thank the president for the performance of this particular INEC and uh, the queries they've taken. And that adds to the fact that first, you know, Fintry is an exceptional governor, very, very exceptional. What he has done in terms of infrastructural development earned him even a commendation by the president, despite the fact that he is from the PDP, and there is an APC government at the center. But, but let, me, let, let me even jump, let me just jump in. Let me jump in there. Yeah. I mean, you, you've described yes. him as an uh, exceptional governor. But but some people would argue that, look, if he was that exceptional, he he should have won his election outright. I mean, at, at the very first ballot. So for these, yeah, you know, for, for, for the candidate, Binani, mm. the candidate of the mm. APC, to have pushed him thus far, you know, pushed him to to get uh, to to, uh, to 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 a second ballot if you like uh, that's a supplementary election that clearly shows that the governor may not be as popular as uh, first thought <laughs> you know uh, that's just a, a street uh, assessment but i can assure you that 31000 plus something votes is a very good clearance in any democratic setup to declare a governor and what happened definitely you know, came along with uh, deliberate attempts to scuttle the entire process, thinking that even at the end of the day, you know, Binani is going to take the whole show. But uh, most sincerely, even at the second rerun, which uh, it's another good way to give a very good clearance. You can see that the lead is also good enough, and uh, the man has made it at least at the end of the day. So to my mind, we are the ones that say that even if you are defeated by just one vote, it is democracy and it stands. Mm. But uh, perhaps not to go by uh, Gaddafi's dream book that says that it's dictatorship of just a few minority above the larger. But uh, we, we, we take it the way it is and agree that the popularity of Fintry himself has given him a very fantastic goodwill. And I assure you that uh, despite the fact that uh, things went the way they are and some claims are showing that Binani also did her best. Yes, she's a sitting senator and uh, to some extent uh, she's a lady and the gender considerations and whatnot have also gone into play. Do, do, do you think, do you think, let, let me ask you this, do, do you yes, think yes, yes, yes. Uh, part of the reason she probably didn't scale the hurdle eventually uh, could be because of her agenda? Because look, despite everything that happened, so, some people had looked forward to, you know, uh, Adama State setting a record by, by electing a first uh, a female governor. I, I mean, that is without prejudice to uh, the, the fact that uh, Fintory has been declared winner and, and that he won the election. But, but do you think uh, the reason why she probably did not get there is because Adama State, for instance, is not uh, prepared yet, just yet, for a, a female governor? And no, I don't think so. You know, Adama State is a wonderful state, highly uh, plural. Uh, um, people agree with virtually everything. And you is to deputizing Amadou Fintry, for instance, is also another female, you know, a deputy governor. So essentially, we can all agree to the fact that uh, it's a state that is friendly to women mm. and that whatever that is done, you know, is going on. We have Professor Kaletapwa Farauta, who is deputizing the current governor presently. So I'm sure the gender issues is just an issue of balancing. You know, the women pull all the votes for themselves both ways. And uh, it happened that the man that performed along the line came out at least to be declared as the actual person that got the whole thing. I've told you earlier on that uh, Fintry infrastructurally have done greater than any other governor in northern Nigeria, in northeast, and even in Nigeria. He's been commended and have been given an award by the president, federal, uh, president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That in itself gave him what it takes. Mm. And I'm sure his patience is also responsible for that particular thing. No sitting governor will allow the level of provocation that we saw along the line and uh, ill process in the process and uh, just compose himself and go on and wait for every run, which definitely he got it right. And there have been other issues too that have worked systematically, you know, even from my local government, which uh, had to add up, you know, on the rerun, whatever it is, an entire ward, mm. that we've seen people coming in, you know, to come and scuttle the election by wanting to tamper with the beavers. They've been caught and the media, including TVC, highlighted such a process in favor of somebody else. But then, uh, let's give it all to what he's able to do socially, uh, physically, and also bringing in the issues of gender balance 
uh, by picking a woman of uh, credible intention and performance to deputize him. So, so, you, so I don't think so, anything so, was So you think to... that the time will definitely come when a woman, if, if, if for instance, Binani is able to sustain the temple, uh, the time will come when a woman will be the gov uh, uh, could be a governor in Adamawa State. I, I don't think that's a problem with us here in Adamawa State. You know, uh, you listen to people down the street talk things against women and whatnot. If only they can agree that she should be a senator, they can also agree that she should be a governor. Obviously. And with all good intention, you know, what really happened is just the process that is scuttled and that have dented her personality to some extent as having been involved, you know, in allowing somebody to declare her without her verification, hmm. you know, coming up to accept that particular election. I think that was just the issue. But other than it, if she had shown integrity and she's consistent in what she's doing, I assure you that when the time comes, she could be declared, you know, one way or the other after this run of elections. Okay, but let, then, let me go, let me go, let uh, me come, come to you, Shehu. You, you, do you think this whole thing has damaged uh, the, the reputation of uh, Binani, uh, the, the candidate of the APC? Because whether we like it or not, she's, she's quite popular. Okay. Um, as, as to the reputation of uh, Binani, whether this uh, incident had... Uh, dent her reputation uh what happened at the uh, at the collation center we don't know whose interest uh the wreck was uh, playing out you know uh the action of the wreck was very 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 unfortunate we don't know who is responsible for that you cannot uh cannot begin to point accusing finger we don't know whose uh, interest um the wreck was serving whether he was serving the interest of the candidate directly but uh, I will continue to say is is a uh, is an indication that uh, our system or our institution are not foolproof, and uh, I will continue to applaud the action of the INEC and the leadership of the country by by way of uh, by as our president uh, President Muhammad Buhari the action we have taken so far. So I don't know. We don't know whose interest uh, the rep was serving. Now, the, the reason, the, sorry, sorry to jump in here, but the reason I asked you that question is because we know after that mm -hmm. declaration uh, by the resident electoral commissioner, the candidate of the APC went on to issue a statement accepting, uh, quote unquote, her, her, her election as, as governor elect. She, she even uh, she put out a statement, and, and not just that, it didn't end there. She, she went to court to seek to uh, sort of enforce uh, the, the recognition of, uh, if you like, that uh, controversial declaration. Sincerely, um, that, uh, that, those actions were, were very unfortunate, you know, were, were very, very unfortunate because when, if you watch the direct declaring the, the, his own making that chubby declaration, you know, everybody will you'll be shocked that we have a right that to will, will, will go to this extent to declare a winner in a process that was uh, in, a, in an election, in a runoff election that was still uh, yet unconcluded yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the candidate action that followed, you know, she is an individual. She has a uh, she 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 is responsible for her actions. Sincerely, it was not uh, it uh, as personally, I was not impressed by by the action of our candidates i think we should pick the lessons from this and uh, i'm happy to 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 know that INEC has taken the appropriate stuff and mm. uh, the the person involved directly involved that is hudu uh ari has been uh, suspended and uh, the the necessary investigation will be done and uh, those culpable will be will be held responsible for this all right, gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for coming on the program and sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, Dr. John Ngamsa, thank you very much for your thoughts and uh, thank you for your contributions. And uh, Shehu Ata, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so very much to both of you. All right, we'll take a short break now, but when we come back, uh, Kaduna State Governor Nasser El Rufai has raised an alarm that bandits could be plotting an attack during uh, the May 29th handover date. So we'll find out what exactly that threat is about. Stay with us, don't go away. Opinions are free, facts are sacred, the truth is universal. How, in practical terms, can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself 
as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On Digi360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, the future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. Digi360, dissecting the issues.